Who was William Hartnell? Well, he played Doctor Number One. I love his performance, I love his Doctor, I love Hartnell Doctor Who episodes. To get a little more whimsical, and I'll try and snap out of that in a minute, I find there's something massively classy and magical about those particular serials. But who was William Hartnell? In regards to that question, I would like to refer you to this particular piece of text. Biographical information about William Hartnell is hard to substantiate because of conflicting information from different sources. Oh boy. There really is a lot to unpack with trying to unearth the life and times of Mr. Billy Henry H. Was he born in Seaton, Devon or the slums of St. Pancras, London? Was his father a dairy farmer or a soldier turned stockbroker? More contradictory accounts to follow, but here's some of what we do know. William Hartnell was acting as far back as 1926, mostly in Shakespearean theatre. He fought in the Second World War and after suffering a nervous breakdown returned to acting in the 1940s. Lots of acting. Mostly playing shouty, fuggy authority figures in predominantly comedic roles. He was in Carry On Sergeant, Second World War drama The Way Ahead and, well, loads more besides. It was his performances in the TV series The Army Game and the drama movie This Sporting Life that put him on Verity Lambert's radar. And so, to gloss over 50 years of life experience, there it is. At the extreme back end of his career was the iconic role which eclipsed everything else he did. Susan Foreman's grandfather. Foreman. Chosen chimp here. There's a biography about William Hartnell. It's called Who's There? The Life and Career of William Hartnell. It was written by his granddaughter Jessica Carney, and according to Wiki Fandom, this biography is criticised by some as being more of a hagiography. Okay, let's see. The term hagiography is often used as a pejorative reference to biographies and histories whose authors are perceived to be uncritical of or reverential toward their subject. Implying, I suppose, that this book leans unnecessarily heavily towards the good stuff. Although in that same paragraph of wiki fandom, it is also said that the book fully acknowledges the difficulty of finding out the facts, and that extensive research on the man was done. So here's the thing. You love a person and their contribution to your favourite piece of media and so you get research in to find out more about that person. It's pretty common knowledge that William Hartnell was often a pretty stern dude and not always the easiest person to work with. In this regard, he would not be the last of his kind. There's also as many claims that he was very likeable and affectionate to those around him. Perhaps he abided by a certain standard whereby you'd prove yourself worthy of the man's respect and after that you were all good. There's a whole other debate, and a pretty seismic one at that, which questions whether or not Hartnell was racist and anti-Semitic, and how the apparent existence of such views were contradicted by the fact that he did indeed have a great deal of admiration for director Waris Hussein, who was Indian, and also a great deal of love for Carol Ann Ford and Verity Lambert, both of whom were Jewish. There are more examples like these, including Hartnell's adoration for black baritone bass musician Paul Robeson on a Desert Island Discs interview in 1960. That's not to say that having these examples in tow closes the book on Hartnell's alleged leaning towards certain types of xenophobia, more so suggesting that if anything, maybe he didn't practice the ideals that he preached, or that forging these relationships in Doctor Who allowed him to find a better part of himself. There's a great deal to study and take into account if you want to look into the controversial nature of Hartnell's political beliefs. It's not the main purpose of this video, but I feel it would be a little wishy-washy of me to pretend that it doesn't come up when you do research on the guy. Other conflicting reports about William Hartnell also include the numerous botching of lines on Doctor Who, often to humorous effect, also known by Doctor Who fans as Hartnellisms or Billy Fluffs, and how much of these may have actually boiled down to his undiagnosed arteriosclerosis, the resulting symptoms of which do match up with his often slips of the tongue. But then again, there are plenty of available examples of co-stars doing the same thing in early Doctor Who. There is also no end of boom mics and shadows and the occasional mysterious extra to be found when watching these old serials, and this was because scenes in the first handfuls of Doctor Who were performed with near enough no edits, and rudimentary vision 
and mix into actors' cuts, recorded in one take and on one reel. You gotta think of Doctor Who more as like watching a play than TV in many respects, or edited together watches of live TV. You had to learn your lines, perform on the night, and if there were little hiccups along the way, they just get left in. When you consider this much pressure to perform, you can't criticise Doctor Who for the mistakes, but praise it for all the stuff that went right. It vastly outweighs the gaffes, and Hartnell's performance is simply incredible, warts and all. Other clashes of accounts also include whether or not the Billy Fluffs increased in conjunction with Hartnell's decline in health during the many lost episodes of Season 3. Some say certain reports of Hartnell's health were exaggerated by producer John Wiles and Inez Lloyd to nudge Hartnell out of the series due to pay disputes. Oh, what else? Oh yeah, Patrick Troughton. William Hartnell really admired the guy, that was for sure. Though some say bringing in Troughton as a replacement was his idea, others say he was just told it was going to happen whether he wanted it to or not. I think you get the idea. Only so much you can say with relative clarity. Only so much history that stands uncontested. Sorry. You know I wanted to make this a video about William Hartnell, instead it turned out to be more a video about me trying to make a video about William Hartnell. So how about this? Let's move on to a few things that I can say with full confidence. One of the best and most efficient ways to get a handle on the legacy of William Hartnell's time in Doctor Who is to watch an adventure in space and time. I really can't tell you how much I love this Mark Gatiss biographical drama from 2013, broadcast 50 years almost to the day after the very first TV transmission of Doctor Who. Well, actually, I can tell you, because I've banged on about it loads on this channel. It really talks turkey about the Hartnell years in a wonderfully crafted narrative. It's also great because the more you watch it, the more you can pick out the little Easter eggs from Doctor Who of that era. One of my favourite games is, which serial are they filming here now? <laughs> Unearthly Child and Daleks is easy, of course. But then you got this bit with the bandage on his head, so that's Edge of Destruction covered. Marco Polo there with Ian's kimono, which he also wears in Keys of Marinus. Hartnell looking all French and dapper in Reign of Terror, bidding farewell to Carol Ann Ford in the Dalek invasion of Earth. Some Monoptera, that can only mean the web planet, Stephen and Dodo. This scene where Mr Hartnell struggles to coordinate is from the massively lost The Massacre of St Bartholomew's Eve. Ben and Polly there, the 10th planet OBS the end. If you're looking for bang on chronological accuracy across the board in every microscopic detail, then you will find holes aplenty in an adventure in space and time, because for the sake of telling a good story, certain details are changed and repositioned. They just had to be. It even says so at the beginning. But if you want the essence of the Hartnell era, then this is the one. I figure that William Hartnell didn't actually have a vision of Matt Smith back in 1966, but that doesn't matter, does it? It was a beautiful way to end the story. David Bradley smashed it. Perhaps David Bradley studied this footage of Hartnell that was discovered in 2009, but was originally filmed in January 1967. William Hartnell in a dressing room, discussing some of the mechanics of playing the Doctor and acting in general. Keep in mind that this was filmed after he was done and dusted in Doctor Who. Go check it out wherever you can find it. It's a fascinating artefact and a good insight into the steely grit of the man who by this time wasn't even in the prime of his health. So a while back, I listened to the 2017 Big Finish production of Domain of the Vord. This early adventure story serves as a pretty meaty follow-up to the wonderfully daft Keys of Marinus from 1963. And alongside Carol Ann Vord, Ford, sorry, as Susan, it also sees the return of William Russell, reprising his role as Ian Chesterton, as well as playing Hartnell's Doctor himself. All right, calm down, there's plenty of room. Remember Richard Herndall? Gotta mention that guy, of course, it's a William Hartnell video. As a bit of bonus content, this audiobook contains a little soundbite from William Russell where he briefly talks about his time during the filming of Keys of Marinus as Ian Chesterton, with some lovely words about former colleagues, including, of course, 
William Hartnell. There was only one Doctor Who for me, as you can imagine, and that was Bill. He had so many different unexpected qualities which he was able to show. I thought he was brilliant. Though straight to the point, I think this is a wonderful homage. Hartnell did indeed throw himself into the role of the Doctor. His mannerisms, his playfulness, his intensity, his wholehearted willingness. The original seasons of Doctor Who were a success for a lot of reasons, and the input from cast and crew made it a true sum of its parts, and yet it's hard to imagine it becoming what it did without the contribution from this guy. I don't think it's an understatement to say that he was the glue that held the show together. When I describe Doctor Who to people who don't watch it, I explain to them that the Doctor is a character who demands and subsequently earns your attention for every second they can be seen on camera. You're not looking at anything else, you're just looking at that face and those eyes, and you're hanging on every word of dialogue. Little or nothing else on screen at the same time eclipses the aura of that particular character. And make no mistake folks, Hartnell epitomised this, and he did so because he really cared so much about this character. William Henry Hartnell was not a perfect man, but his performance in Doctor Who was. And at the risk of resting firmly on hyperbole, it's also timeless. What are some of your favourite William Hartnell moments and episodes? Sound off in the comments and don't forget to hit subscribe. Have a good one.